Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's great to see you today. Um, just a few announcements for us. Um, a community announcement. Our, um, memor our Memorial Day services that um, were kind of suspended for the past couple of years due to COVID and, and other things is going to commence on Memorial Day at 10 o'clock at the Shelby Cemetery. So if you would like to join us there, um, we would be happy to see you. And if you would please um, share that news with your neighbors and those that uh, you know would be interested. Then I want to just remind you that our summer hours are coming up. Starting on June 5th, we're going to return to 9.30 a.m. services. So I need you also to spread that news as well. Then I just want to share one more time about our Vacation Bible Camp that's coming up on June 13th through 16th. Um, we're still in need of some helpers and some people to um, provide some meals and um, different things for our camp counselors. And so uh, there is a big poster board back there um, by the entrance of the sanctuary. If you would, please take a look and see where you could um, perhaps uh, fill in and and do a little um, help for our Vacation Bible Camp. Also, if, um, if you're not able to physically help, we would appreciate your prayers. Um, it's always a, kind of a chaotic but fun time, and uh, of course we wanna make sure that everybody is um, safe and gets to and from our um, Bible Camp safely and, and has a good time while they're here. So um, please remember to keep the young people and the, the people that are helping in your prayers during that time. I think those are our announcements. Are there others that need to be shared this morning? Any prayer concerns that we need to add to the list? Okay. All right. Then the last thing is um, we welcome the family of Aurora Burmeister, who's going to be baptized a little bit later in our service. And so thank you all for coming, and we're um, joyful in celebrating this special day with all of you. All right. Let us begin then with our confession and forgiveness. And if you are able, I invite you to rise. of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and truly magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Lord Jesus, our risen Savior, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. We have lived for this world alone, and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for the amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn today is What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and we'll remain standing for the first hymn.
us with an everlasting love for the sake of Christ. Grant us your peace so that in times of this world's tribulations we may always remember that your Son has overcome the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time we'll have the first readings of the day. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized and her household as well, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. If you would read responsively Psalm 67 with um, the bold print. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the, the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Our second reading today comes from Revelation chapter 21, verses 9 through 14, and then 21 through 27. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed, and on the east three gates, and on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it, and its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, 
but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. At this time, I would invite the children forward for a children's message. Um, 
The Gospel um, according to John chapter 16. Jesus said to his disciples, On that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. 
In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, uh, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be unto Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Thank you. This Easter season, um, I've been reflecting and meditating a lot on this theme of God's glory. It's really not very hard to do when appreciating the beauty and splendor of God's creation in the unfolding spring. How do birds know when to fly north? How do the trees know when to flower or bud? What directs the sky to give cloud or sun or rain for thirsty, sprouting seeds? God, of course. He orchestrates it all in a perfect symphony of sights and sounds, bringing pleasure and joy to the soul. I suppose this is partly the reason that farmers get excited to plant their fields and gardeners go shopping for vegetable and flower seedlings. They enjoy being a part of this process of life, of creating and keeping and sustaining. And yet the natural cycle of all created things is to mature and to bear fruit and eventually die. Last week we lost a dear member of our church and community. Mr. Brockman and his wife Karen were those kind of people, the kind that sowed physical and spiritual seeds and then carefully nurtured and tended to them, both in their garden, in the school, at home, and in church. During Richard's funeral last Thursday, I shared the reading from Revelation that we have as our second lesson. It gives us a description of John's vision of God's glory coming down out of heaven, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, in Revelation, it sounds more beautiful than all the cathedrals of Europe with their stained glass windows, their painted ceilings, their marbled statues, and towering spires. Revelation 21, verses 11 and 12 says, The new Jerusalem, shown with the glory of God and its brilliance, was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. Later in verses 19 to 21, we read that the foundations of the city's walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. Just think about that. Each gate in the city of the New Jerusalem is a single pearl. You know how big a pearl is, right? <laughs> I mean, it comes from a speck of dust coming inside of a shell. It comes from dirt inside of a shell. And God can create a gate out of a pearl. Not just one, <laughs> but every gate. <laughs> 
Oh, this is my boy. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light. And the Lamb is the Lamb. The Lamb is the Lamb. That is amazing. Being in the presence of God's glory is so warm and so bright, there is no need for sun, moon, or stars. Our loved ones who have passed on are blessed to be with Jesus, surrounded by this glorious light and unconditional love. Now, we tend to think of glory as achievement, fame, or success, or power. Our castles, our kingdoms, our cathedrals, our empires built, always bigger and better than the last. These things we do and we build for recognition, for honor, and the respect of others. Author Michael Green says, the only glory that men have is granted to them. The glory that is God's is in his essence. In contrast, if you take a king and take off all his robes and crowns and give him only a rag to wear and leave him on the streets for a few weeks, when you put next to a beggar, you'll never know which is which. Because there is no intrinsic glory. The only glory a king has is when you give him a crown and a robe and sit him on his throne. True glory is not found in human achievements, wealth, power, or fame. In fact, it comes in the opposite. True glory comes in the cross, an instrument of sacrifice, suffering, and shame. The glory of heaven is not in crystal gemstones or golden streets or even those gates of pearl, but in Christ the Lamb. Revelation 21, 23. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light. And the Lamb is the Lamb. The Lamb of the Lamb. The Lamb is the Lamb of heaven. The glory of God is in the work of the cross. Christ's sacrifice for his gifts of forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. These gifts are given with his promise of grace and mercy through the sacrament of baptism. We rejoice today that Aurora Burmeister receives that gift and promise. And we remember God's promises for us in our own baptisms as well. And baptism is not our own doing. It is God's work from the beginning to the end. In our baptism, God names us his children. He calls us Christian. He names us as his own. And he promises his grace, his mercy, and forgiveness on the account of Jesus Christ, the Lamb and the lamp of heaven. He won for us the victory over sin and death, and he has overcome the world, the cross, and his glorious resurrection. This is the glory of heaven. So today when we witness Aurora's baptism, let us also uh, remember our own and the gifts and the promises that we have received. The glory of the cross is Jesus' glory. And so we focus not on our own glory and the things that we do to be righteous or good, but on the work of Christ in his suffering and his death and his resurrection. Indeed, Christ has overcome the world. Amen. We're going to sing a baptism song, Baptized in Water.
to grab a hymnal in front of you uh, to follow along with our baptismal service. That can be found on page 227 um, in the front part of your hymnal. And um, we'll, uh, we'll just give a couple of seconds here. Um, one of our sponsors has gone downstairs briefly. And so um, we'll have you stay seated there until um, just, before, just before the baptism itself. Oh, she is. I thought she went out. I'm sorry. Never mind. You can stay seated there anyways for a, for a few minutes. Okay. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Aurora, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, will be baptized into Christ. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, I ask you parents, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? As you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with some responsibilities. They are to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the Word of God and to the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer, so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ in word and deed, to care for others and the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say, I do. I do. Okay. And sponsors. Do you promise to nurture Aurora in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, say, I do. And you, the people of God, do you promise to support them and pray for them in their life in Christ? So say, I do. Amen. And now I ask you all to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Amen. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Yes. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now I invite you to come forward. <clears throat> you guys want to come up and around so that you can see a little better, maybe? Or you can see it or wherever you'd like it. Yeah, we'll make room. Okay. So we have a blessing for the water and the prayer, so let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning 
We, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Aurora, Joanna, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be God, the source of all light, the word of salvation, and the spirit of mercy. You belong to Christ, and you have been baptized. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons a new birth. Cleanse them from sin, raise them to eternal life. Sustain Aurora with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Aurora, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let your light, Aurora, so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming words to all the world. Amen. Let's sing Jesus Love Me for her. Can I go Oh my gosh, she's such a gorgeous child. Oh, that's your mom. That's your dad. All right, here we go. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Alrighty. Alrighty. God bless you. Thank you. All 
right. And now we get a beautiful music from Grandma in honor of her baptism.
With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and those in need. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you call us to walk with Jesus in this life of faith. Help us to trust in your abiding mercy and constant care as we seek to do your will in the world. Guide us to walk to the places you would have us go that your name would be praised and all people would come to know you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, all good gifts, we praise your name and thank you for the good gifts you give to us each day. In this Easter season, we especially thank you for the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. May we live each and every day focused on your love and your will for your people. In times of trial, help us to see your loving kindness, trusting that you began a good work in us and be faithful to complete it. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of all wisdom, be with all students and teachers who are finishing up classes for the year. Be with all those who are graduating and moving on to whatever is next in their lives. Instill in each of them a deep understanding of your call on their lives that they may serve you in all they do. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving Lord, you are the source of all peace for our lives. Grant us your healing power when we are sick and your peace in all circumstances. We pray for those among us and within us and around us that are struggling with uh, grief, illness, despair, we pray especially those who are on our prayer list for Elisa Clark, Aaron Carstensen, Tony Eggers, Ralph Haas, Michelle Jacobson, Ronna Jewell, Brian Caster, Jeannie Kiesel, Eric Lindstrom, Danny Miner, Calvin Peterson, Maxine Sick, Catherine Toms, Bob Toms, Donnie Turk, Lee Wingert, Holly Curran, and also Lord, we remember the family of Richard Brockman. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, in Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. At this time, I would just like to offer a word of thanks for offerings received today and throughout the week. And if you would like to contribute to our mission, um, our offering plates are there at the entrance of the sanctuary if you'd like to leave a gift there. Or if uh, you like to use technology, there is the uh, QR code. You could scan that with your phone now. Or um, you could scan that uh, on your computer and uh, give through our, our donation page on our website, which is unitedlutheranshelby.org. So thank you for all the gifts that you've given to our ministry here at United. Let's pray Thanksgiving. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we humbly offer you the gifts of our treasures, our talents, and our time. Use them to your glory and for the benefit of all your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Your Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious.
gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Blessed Assurance. <laughs>